Hey everyone, this can be a bit of a challenging topic on the interest rate corridor, so I thought I'd do a quick video to help us uh, understand what it's all about. So as with most things, let's start with some terminology um, to set the ground before we move on to the trickier stuff. So firstly, the Reserve Bank of Australia, um, you'll often see that's uh, shown as the RBA. Uh, the easiest way to think of the RBA, they do many, many things, but when we're first learning about it, the easiest thing to think is they're the bank for the banks. Now they hold, as I said before, lots of other roles in the economy um, that we only touch on here in year 12 economics. But for the purposes of understanding the interest rate corridor, I want you to think of them as the bank for the banks. The other idea here is this thing called an exchange settlement account, which is just a fancy way for calling the bank account uh, by which the banks hold with the Reserve Bank of Australia. So if you can think of your bank account that you might have with your particular financial institution, well, that financial institution will also have a bank account with its own bank balance. And that uh, in this context is called an exchange settlement account. We've got this thing called a cash rate. Now the cash rate is uh, the rate at which financial institutions will borrow and lend money to each other. So you can think of it as kind of the price of um, uh, the banks borrowing and lending money. And then you have a similar thing called the cash rate target. Now this is the thing that the Reserve Bank of Australia is aiming for. There's a particular price of money that the Reserve Bank is aiming for the banks to exchange with each other and that's called the cash rate target. And when you hear um, the cash rate being uh, talked about in the media, it's usually the cash rate target that they're actually referring to. Because the actual price that uh, financial institutions exchange with one another might actually be a little bit different to what the actual target is um, by the Reserve Bank. We then have this idea of an interest rate and an interest rate uh, in the context, usually of what we're talking about here is a commercial interest rate, as in the rate at which um, regular mums and dads and businesses will borrow or lend money to um, in their particular situations. Uh, and it can be a little bit confusing because we're going to be talking about <clears throat> the interest rate corridor. But interest rates traditionally in year 12 economics um, are just the cost of borrowing money and the reward for saving or lending money. Then we have these two ones that are going to be uh, important in what we understand with the cash rate or the interest rate corridor. The first one is the lending rate. And as the name suggests, that's the rate that um, uh, those institutions who wish to borrow money will be paying. And then you've got the deposit rate, which is the other side of the coin, whereas financial institutions with surplus funds in their exchange settlement accounts, they will be uh, depositing that with the Reserve Bank of Australia at that particular rate. So if any of these are a little unclear, maybe um, go over the description here again, maybe refer to your textbook a little bit, do some extra um, definitions of these before you move forward with the video. Okay, we're going to st uh, pretty much stick with this kind of format of the chart. So we're going to go through what we're seeing here. So what do we do when we're analysing a chart? We'll uh, always start at the heading here. And this is called the Policy Interest Rate Corridor, which is what we're going to explain here. The first thing I want you to have a look at is this cash rate target. Okay, that's going to be the first point I want you to, to hone in on here. Remember we said earlier the cash rate target is the target price at which the Reserve Bank would like the reserve, uh, sorry, would like the commercial um, uh, banks to exchange funds with each other. So this is what you'll hear in the news. You know, the, the cash rate is currently sitting at 4.25 or whatever it might be, 4.1, whatever the number is. That's the number here that the Reserve Bank um, uh, would like to price money at in the money market. Then what you'll find is, well, how the Reserve Bank actually incentivizes financial institutions to trade money at that price, because they can't actually force it. You know, they're not allowed, um, as per the legislation, to force banks to do this, because uh, we live in a, a relatively open market capitalist economy. But what they can do is provide incentives, which are enshrined in legislation, to encourage banks to do that. And this is how they do it. Now, for the purposes of this video, and to make it really easy maths, I'm going to assume that the cash rate target here is going to be 4%. Okay, let's just keep in our heads. I know the time at which you're watching this video, it's probably going to be different than 4. But let's just say it's 4%. That's the price, as I said, the Reserve Bank wants the banks to, or financial institutions to, to exchange funds with each other. And this is how they do it. So at the end of the day, 
uh, the banks are not allowed to have any deficit um, funds in their exchange settlement accounts. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, uh, if you are, I don't know, the Commonwealth Bank and you have had just lots of people spending their money in that particular day, more than other banks have been um, depositing into your bank account, well, that particular bank is going to have more money going out of their, uh, of their institution than they are coming in. And at the end of the day, they're going to essentially have a negative balance on their exchange settlement accounts. Now, as I said earlier, that's something that the financial institutions are not allowed to do. And so they're going to have to borrow that money from somewhere. Okay, They're going to have to go, okay, well, where am I going to get that money from? Now, remember at the top, I said, the Reserve Bank of Australia is the bank for the banks. And so the Reserve Bank, they're saying, hey, you want to borrow from me? Absolutely fine. Not a problem. The price I'm going to give you on the money that you need to, to borrow to get your exchange settlement accounts um, out of deficit is going to be 25 percentage points. That's PPT. 25 percentage points, or you might hear the phrase basis points. So, um, 25 basis points is 0.25%. I'm going to give you a uh, an interest rate price, 25 basis points above this cash rate target. 25 above. Now just think, if you are the one borrowing money, is that a good or a bad thing for you if you get a higher interest rate? I feel like Dora the Explorer, but yes, that is a bad thing. You don't want that. And then so you're like, ah, oh, so you're that Commonwealth Bank, you're looking around, where else can I actually borrow this money from? It's not a great situation for you. Now, let's say in another situation, you're looking at the Westpac uh, Bank on that particular day, and all of the businesses that have their accounts with Westpac had really good trading days. And so they've got, Westpac has way more money that has come into their particular exchange settlement account than has gone out. So they've got all this leftover money just hanging around in the exchange settlement accounts. And the Reserve Bank of Australia goes to Westpac and says, oh, amazing, I'm very happy. If you leave that money in your exchange settlement account, I'm going to give you a price of 10 basis points below the target cash rate. Below. Now think to yourself, if you want to lend your money out, that's essentially Westpac lending its money to the Reserve Bank of Australia. If you are lending your money out and you've got the Reserve Bank offering you a low exchange rate, is that a good or a bad thing? And that's a bad thing. And so if you have a look and you say, well, okay, if you've got Commonwealth Bank and Westpac both just you know, independently talking to the Reserve Bank, they're both getting screwed. And this is the incentive that the Reserve Bank is providing is what they're saying is they're saying, hey, Commonwealth, Westpac, talk to each other. And then so the Commonwealth Bank, remember, they're the ones who need to lend money. They talk to their friends over at Westpac. Well, they don't talk. It's all computers, but you know what I mean. They talk to their friends at Westpac and say, hey, Westpac, I've got some money I would like to borrow. Do you have extra money? And Westpac goes, yeah, I absolutely have some extra money that I want to lend. And in fact, I want to lend with you because the one who's borrowing doesn't want to pay that really high exchange, uh, sorry, interest rate. And the one that's lending doesn't want to um, receive that really low interest rate. And so what they do is they then negotiate a price that is going to obviously be below this price here, because why would um, Commonwealth borrow at the same rate that they're just going to get from the Reserve Bank? They're going to try for a better deal that's somewhere lower. And then you've got the Westpac, and they're not going to accept this particular interest rate here, because they could have just gotten that with the RBA. They're going to try and get a little bit more out of the Commonwealth Bank. And so where it settles is it in this kind of middle zone of the cash rate target. You'll notice either sides here, you've got 0.25% uh, percentage points above and 0.1 percentage points below. So it's not the same on either side. You'll notice some of your, um, your textbook might be saying it's 25 either side. It's 25 basis points on the top and 10 basis points on the bottom um, for reasons we won't go into in a short 12 minute video. Uh, but just be very clear on that. And then so how it works out is roughly speaking, that's where the cash rate, the price at which banks exchange with each other, settles at around that cash rate target. Cool. So then what happens when the, when the Reserve Bank wants to change the particular cash rate with an intent for banks to change their interest rates, their commercial interest rates? Well, all they do then is they shuffle that cash rate target down 
or up, depending on which way they want to move the particular interest rate um, effect at the end. And so in this instance here, we've got a cash rate target movement down of 25 basis points. And so what you'll find is the whole corridor, and by the reason why it's called a corridor, as you can see, it's kind of got two sides, a top and a bottom side. Um, and the whole corridor, 25 basis points above the new cash rate target, and 10 basis points below the old, uh, sorry, the um, the new cash rate target, the whole corridor will just shift down or up depending on what the Reserve Bank wants to do. In this instance, they're going to shuffle the corridor down if they want to make the price of borrowing money cheaper and stimulate more economic activity. And then so the, the, the process then just follows. So banks will then borrow from other banks at the lower rate and banks will deposit at the higher rate um, depending on if they have a surplus or um, a deficit uh, level of money in their exchange settlement accounts. By the way, a little hot tip about how you can remember the words lending and deposit, which is which. A little silly trick. Deposit starts with the letter D, which stands for down. So the one that's further down than the other one is the deposit rate. So lending rate at the top, deposit rate at the bottom. A little hot tip for you, okay? And that is what we call the policy interest rate corridor. So, whoop, wrong way. All right, so a quick recap. The cash rate target is the rate at which the Reserve Bank aims for the banks to balance their ESAs. So they're not allowed to have a negative balance. They can't go over to the next day with um, a deficit of funds in their bank account, known as the exchange settlement accounts. And then so the Reserve Bank provides an incentive on both sides for banks that have too much money or not enough money for them to exchange with each other, which settles on average close-ish around to what the cash rate target is. To change that target cash rate, the Reserve Bank just simply announces a change where we're going to drop by 25 basis points or whatever it might be, and then the lending and deposit rates change accordingly. The price at which banks exchange with each other changes accordingly. And then they pass on those changes to their lending costs in the form of a change in commercial interest rates. So let's say in a scenario before, the, uh, the rate at which they exchange was 4%, and then now it went to 3.5%. 75%, well then the price at which banks borrow money from each other has fallen. And then so what you will often find then that then is passed on in the form of lower interest rates onto their commercial consumers, which is obviously going to provide more um, favorable lending conditions for consumers and businesses, which would be the intent of the Reserve Bank to lower the target cash rate. Hopefully that helps. Sometimes it's handy for videos to go back and rewatch sections. Any questions? Uh, please go and see your teacher. Otherwise, happy learning.